projects that we have a lot of and the intricacies of having to fish those are the same thing with coronamids. Maybe even more because the depth is such important. But we're going to produce, uh, well, we already produced, but we're going to show you uh, Brian Chan's uh, fly tying and uh, uh, technique tape that he uses with his flies. Uh, we're going to go through each fly, uh, and uh, they'll be there for you to uh, tie from and get to know Brian. Brian, uh, uh, we've re really, really had some fun, fun times together and caught a lot of big fish. Anyway, Brian will, will explain this. I'll be with him, and we're, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, we might mention to you, uh, by the way, he and Phil Rowley's tapes were probably some of my biggest selling uh, DVDs. And I put together uh, on eBay uh, 12 the uh, Stillwater tapes for twenty dollars. It's amazing. There's some people maybe you never heard of. Denny Richards is in there. Uh, uh, Kelly uh, Gallup. Just a lot of people that are involved with Stillwater. Some Canadians that maybe you haven't heard of. But uh, if you want to keep these, I know you can get it off my channel. But if you want to keep these for prosperity, you'll always have them. You don't have to worry about downloads, and it'll be right there. And, this is essentially what it cost me to produce so. But I want to have them in your hands. Uh, one of the big things that I do is work uh, volunteer as soon as this pandemic's over, back with uh, Project Healing Water. I've got books and DVDs. This will help. Anyway, thank you very much. And on with Brian Chan. Catching up to it. It's great to have large arbor reels on any fishing situation, certainly here when they go way out in the back and you've got to try to catch up to them. Oh, that's a nice fish. That's a beautiful rainbow. Ate the chronomid. Just shows, just tells you that it's just good to show that nice sized fish, big fish will eat small food items. Simply because again, there's so many of these people in the water column and it's an easy meal. Get the net ready. There we go. Okay, so got the fish here and we'll just uh, give you a quick look at them. It's a well-conditioned rainbow. And I'll just let her go. It's a beautiful fish. So fishing chronic patterns catch fish like that, you know they're good to, you know it's a great pattern to use. Well again, uh, good color combinations, good looking fly. Okay, we're, we're going now to a midge pattern. You call this the red green, like uh, named after the uh, famous Canadian television show? <laughs> the, this, is a, this is a chronomid larva, or what we often refer to as budworms, but chronomid larvae come in two common colors, maroonish red and then shades of green, usually um, a medium light to light olive green. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are chronomid species or midge species out there that the, that the larval stage is two-tone, can become uh, green and red. Mm -hmm. And this pattern is a good representation of that. Almost a Christmas larva. Well, like a Christmas tree. Well, I have a Christmas tree pupa too, but we thought we'd show the larva today. Okay, that sounds good. Well, let's take it away with the red-green midge larva. Sounds good. Chronomids or midges have a complete life cycle egg, larva, pupa, and adult, I'm going to tie the larval stage of a midge or a chronomid. The fly I'm tying now I call the green and red midge larva. So it's actually a larva that has both, it's, it's bicolored red and green, and it can be quite common, uh, particularly in western still waters, and they can get quite large. The hook I have in the vise today is, is a curved nymph hook, a 10 3x, so it has a slight bend in the shank. And that's just to give a little up. Uh, you never see a straight larvae in the water. They're always wiggling, so they always have some shape to them. I've got a 1 8 inch silver lined glass bead 
which I've, I've slid up to the eye of the hook. And then I'm going to be tying in a dot uh, red uh, pre-waxed tying thread. And I'm just going to form a base. The flash of blue is going to be the underbody. I have a couple strands of that. And then uh, it's going to be ribbed with uh, Stillwater Solutions uh, mid-stretch floss in the bright red color. And then there'll be a secondary rib of fine silver wire. Well, the first step is we're going to uh, just lay a foundation of the red, or pardon me, the silver wire down. Should be the final rib. And then the first rib will be the the red, the bright red stretch floss. And again, I'm going to tie that in behind the bead. I'm just using the material to build the body up a bit. So I have our two ribs. I'm going to take a few strands of, of the lime green flashaboo. And I find it's sometimes uh, reflect with uh, using, using flashaboo to wet it a bit to, to calm it down and get it to lay down on the, on the hook a little easier. So again, I'm going to lay this down right behind, tied in right behind the, uh, the bead as well. And bring my tying thread back to the bend of the hook and then forward again. And then we'll take our, our flash and we're going to just build the underbody. So midge larvae live at the bottom of the lake. They live in little tubes in the bottom area and they feed on detritus or decaying, decomposing vegetation that passes by. Most, most midge larvae or most midges in general have a one year life cycle, but there are some species particularly, and it's usually the larger species like this fly is imitating, can live uh, for up to two years in the larval stage before they're gonna emerge as as the pupa and then finally as the adult. So it's not uncommon in extremely productive still waters to see midge larvae that are in excess of three quarters of an inch in length. So they can get quite large. And that's what this fly is imitating. So I'm just gonna take my red um, stretch, midge stretch floss and uh, Give it a rib, five to seven wraps would be good. Bring that up to the bead, tie that off. And you notice I've got some tension on this rib, so you've got to make sure you counterwind it to lock it in from behind and then in front. Because as soon as I release the tension, she's going to want to come back. And then the last step will be to take our fine silver wire and just lay down this rib uh, in front of the ribs that we just laid down of the mid stretch floss. Now we're going to be fishing these, these flies close to the bottom because that's where they, they live in those tubes at the bottom. And, um, so a couple ways to fish this would be with f full floating lines and varying lengths of leader so that we can get the leader long enough so the fly will sink to the bottom of the lake and then we can slowly retrieve it or inch it in just above the lake bottom. So typically the majority of coronavid larvae in lakes are living in 25 feet of water or less so that's why we can use that full floating line. The second way to fish this is under a strike indicator and just suspending it uh, six inches, four inches off the lake bottom. And an excellent situation would be to have a slight ripple on the water, quartering a cast out to the side and letting the indicator and fly just drift downwind, just up and down, undulating just over the lake bottom. And when you're, when you're wind drifting any flies under a strike indicator, whether they're midge larvae, midge pupae, leeches, baby damselfly nymphs, things like that, you want to be using a loop knot, a small loop knot, either a Duncan loop or a 
like a 97% loop knot so that that loop allows that fly to pivot that much more realistically. So that's a, a great little tip to really increase the chance of catching a fish. So I'm just going to use the whip finisher now and finish the fly off. Like so. So there you have the completed um, midge larvae. Um, it's, it's bright because it's got the two colors in it, but it's a good color combination that when you look closely in many lakes, you'll see that color. What I love about fly tying is some of the names that are given. I just took a very quick look and I always saw I was pregnant. And <laughs> I'm going to let you pronounce this one since you're a biologist and uh, tell us what this is all about. This has obviously got to be a uh, scud of some type. That's right. It's, it, this fly pattern jack is called the pregnant gamma shrimp or scud. Um, so shrimp mate numerous times a year. Uh, the females.